Hi guys, what's up? Welcome to our YouTube video for Friday, July 9th. Today we're doing something a little different because we're live and we're gonna do a little bit of watercolor painting together with a focus on watercolor florals, my favorite thing. Um, gosh, it's been a minute since we've done a live, so I thought it was about time. And I've got some paints mixed up, I've got my paper here, and I'm hoping to take some requests so we'll see how that goes. Um, I'm just watching everybody come into the chat. It's great to see where everyone is coming from. We have a very like worldwide crew here, which I love. So I love seeing where you're from. So say hello if you're in the chat and definitely think about what you'd like to see. I mean, we don't have unlimited time, so I'm gonna try my best to take some requests. And if you've got a good question, um, preferably something that we haven't addressed on the channel, at least lately, I would love to answer any questions. Chris is here, he will be moderating the chat, so if I'm painting and I miss something, then um, he'll let me know. And please do not spam with your requests. Like if you ask for something, we're gonna try our best to see it and we can only get to so many. If you spam, we will block you. So I'm, that's all I'm gonna say about that. Um, yeah, so let's just jump right in. I mean, I wanna get to it. I am using, let me change this here. I am using some cold pressed uh, paper from Strathmore. I have my usual Mungyo watercolor set. I've mixed up some colors so that I can jump right in and get to um, get to it. And uh, I have actually some new synthetic pointed round brushes from uh, Princeton. And um, I know a lot of people don't like using animal hair brushes. So I've been trying out some of these synthetic ones and you know they do come to a beautiful fine point there and this is number eight this is number four so you can see the difference in size that belly holds lots of paint the nice fine point allows us to do detail work the only thing about synthetic is that i find they don't last quite as long right so you have to switch them out a little more and that's okay uh, so yeah, so if there is something you want to see, you just let me know. Peonies, I'm seeing that. We can definitely do peonies. And I'm going to jump right in and we're going to just kind of warm up with some like really loose stuff. So let's grab a little bit of green here. And it's always nice to warm up by just kind of doing some, some leaves because you're using that brushwork, right, where you're going really fine and then you can add a little more pressure add that pressure and then use just the tip of the brush to do those leaves your st stems branches what have you so I always enjoy doing a few leaves to kind of get warmed up there we go this is a number eight round brush which is a little bit larger than I usually use but I kind of like that definitely allows for these really beautifully natural leaf shapes I'm just gonna add in a little more water it's always nice to get some variations in the transparency and the color just by adding a bit more water I can you know, get a very different kind of look. <laughs> People's portraits, that's definitely not a flower. <laughs> I do have a video though actually on the channel about kind of like fun little watercolor portraits. So just search Shada Campbell watercolor um, portraits and that should come up because we're definitely not gonna get into people today. That's a whole other thing. Um, and it's really not my specialty, but I appreciate the suggestion. Um, and just looking quickly at the calla lily, we could try to get to that daisies. Great, awesome. Okay, someone asked about the workshop week. Yes, I was one of the instructors. That was so much fun. We went live for um, the workshop week as well. And I had a course as part of that week called um, How to Draw Any Flower. And I really put a lot of love into that course. So if you bought the workshop week or if you just joined and enjoyed some of it for free, awesome. There were so many great teachers and artists and content creators that were part of that. 
talk about the colors, peonies again. Yep, for sure, for sure. Um, so today, to get when I, for getting started with my greens, I am using some of my favorite green blends. This really dark one is a blend of um, a deep thallow green, which is a really dark permanent green. And then I've mixed in just like a little bit of dark purple, and it gives you that really wonderfully dark minty green. Oops, I haven't blended that well enough. So you can kind of see some of that purple on the page, but even that's okay. I like doing these lives because it gives you a chance to see everything in real time. And I know we do get a lot of requests still for real time content on the channel. That way you get to see every brush stroke and every little every little detail. You get to see how I'm mixing up the paints. So this deep green is, uh, this blend of, of green is a deep thallow green and purple. And then this lighter green that I really like that's a little more natural. This is olive green and olive brown mixed with a little bit of that uh, thallow green. So it's um, it's got this really nice earthy sort of muddy color that I really love. So almost done warming up with my leaves. It's amazing what you can do just with one brush, just that every flick of the brush creates a different shape and a different look, can be super natural, can be a little more stiff. Just don't overthink it. And if you're doing, you know, if you're gonna start a bit of painting, I love to begin with leaves. Let's add a few loose flowers here. I don't know if you saw last week's tutorial, but last week I did a timed painting and it was really great because I only gave myself like five minutes to do a painting. And it, so it was a sort of a fun challenge, but what it was really supposed to be at its core was just a warm up exercise. You know, if you only have five minutes, you're not going to create a masterpiece. It kind of takes the pressure off and you can just, you know, think about adding a little bit of color. Think about having some fun with your brush strokes. And that's kind of what I'm doing here just to get us warmed up. Just seeing a question here, switching to acrylics, switching from acrylics to watercolor, good palette for the total beginner. Um, I mean, I really love the Munio set. Um, and it also goes by the name Sargent. These are really good for the price. The quality for price is excellent. And I have the 48 pan set, but you do not need to get the 48 pan. They have little 12, you know, I think you can get a set of 12 for like 20 bucks on Amazon, maybe even cheaper. Um, this set uh, in Canada is like 50 bucks, but I think in the US it's, it's even less than that. So really good quality for the price. Um, yeah, so that, that's my go-to, but the Sakura uh, Koi sets are also nice. Those ones are good, good quality, and those ones are very easy to find. They're in a lot of art stores and craft stores, and you can get them on Amazon. So those are good, good place to start. I do recommend for the beginner starting with the pans. They're so much easier. They're just, you open up your tin and you're, you're good to go. This is not a professional palette. This is uh, like what you might call like, um, it's not like a craft quality, it's like a student quality, I would say. So good enough for practicing and getting to know watercolors. You would not want to sell paintings done with these because the uh, just the color fastness isn't there. Now, if you were making prints from your paintings, that's no problem, you know, so what it really comes down to is the longevity of the pigments once you start selling your work or aiming to sell your work. So there we've had a bit of fun getting all warmed up with our messy leaves. Let's start with peonies. I feel like there was a lot of requests for peonies and they're tricky and I have approached them before and I've definitely said like these ones are one that I struggle with so why not do that live, you know? <laughs> butterfly flowers? I don't, I'm not familiar with the butterfly flower. I see that in the chat. Do you mean like a butterfly ranunculus? Cause actually that one I could, I could do if that's what you, if that's what you mean, just clarify maybe. Um, 
milkweed, okay? Yeah. And that's the butterfly flower, milkweed? Yeah. Okay. Is that milk? That's milk that you're thinking. That's pretty, yeah. We can do milkweed. We could do, because we haven't really done anything like that, so that could be really fun. It's made up of lots of tiny flowers. I'm just going to switch to my face for a second. I do have um, a book here that I use for reference. It's a really good called the Flower Color Guide. You can get that on Amazon. And I think it's, it's made by florists. And it's actually not specifically for an artist, but it's great for like if you were getting married and you were looking at what color flowers are in your bridal palette or whatever. But it's a wonderful resource for if you like to paint from a photo. But then of course, you can just go on Google as well, and that's exactly what I'm going to do since I don't know what uh, milkweed and butterfly flower is. So I can uh, just look those up and we can kind of um, paint from, from some Google photos. I'm going to start with peonies. I'm going to throw in a daisy because I am seeing a lot of requests for daisies. And I know, obviously, daisies being a, a white flower, I feel like there's a lot of stuff to talk about there. We can do some milkweed or butterfly flower. I love that one because that one's really different. And I know we have not done that on the channel. Um, and yeah. Yep. Yeah. I see a question about how I get the lines so thin. It's all about the brush. So I don't want to get too into it because I kind of talked about that at the start. But you want to get a good pointed round brush and you're using just the tip of that brush to do your branches and stems. But then the beauty of the pointed round brush is that um, you add a little extra pressure and you're able to make quite large leaves. So you can do both with one brush and that's what's so nice. And as I said, I am using synthetic brushes today from Princeton. Um, so if you are against using animal hair brushes, um, you know, I get that. And these are really good quality. However, animal hair brushes do last a little longer. If you're using synthetic, you really have to be aware. Is the tip of the brush starting to fray? Is it starting to not hold a nice fine point? And at that time you really have to say okay this brush is just no good anymore and and let it go and buy another one i used to get all my brushes at the dollar store i just bought them like every month i buy new brushes <laughs> okay so let's flip to a new page and we will approach the peonies this will be fun peonies are always a little tricky for me they always give me a little bit of anxiety <laughs> because they are so big and fluffy and open and you kind of want to capture that all right so luckily I have some nice peaches and pinks mixed up when you are approaching a flower like a peony that has kind of so many layers and petals you want to um, paint it in layers so we're gonna start by just kind of trying to get the shape right I'm gonna flip over this notebook that I have. Some of the pages are upside down. How annoying is that? <laughs> so you can see that the you're not on the front of the watercolor paper. There we go. Okay, so let's do the peony. I'm starting with kind of trying to get the round shape of that big rounded flower. Just using a very light pink right now. So right there, I am using the tip of the brush and the belly of the brush, and you see me put that pressure there to kind of create this cup shape. Let's lighten our paint a little. I want to get some paint some petals that are kind of falling away from that inner cup shape center. There we go. So you can see now I'm picking up a darker pink, and I'm going to kind of, you know, fill in the back of the peony, the back of that rounded cup. <laughs> Maybe add a little bit of darker paint down here at the bottom. Fill that out a little. Uh, grab some light and maybe, you know, add a, the little hint of a petal over here. Here we go. Part of what I'm doing is um, 
using negative space as a way to differentiate between the different petals and all that kind of helps me add detail to the peony without really adding a lot of detail. There we go. I want to get some leaves in there really quickly while I can still maybe get a bit of a blending of the pink and the green. Might be too late for that, but that's okay. I always like that little blend of color if I can. If I can achieve that, I try to. Got a good question here. Have you ever failed doing a painting? I've yes. I've never seen that before. All the time. <laughs> All the time. Everybody fails. Everybody fails. I do try to share some of my mistakes on the channel. Um, I think it's hard mistakes are tricky to share because I can say oh this one I wasn't happy with and the viewer might say well, oh it's fine you know I think we're always hardest on our own work so where I might see a mistake you might not um, but just try to remember that for yourself is that you're going to be your own worst critic if you follow me on Instagram I often will share pieces of art that I pull out of the drawer and um, <clears throat> I'm just gonna change that quickly and I'll pull something out and say, this is a piece that I really was unhappy with uh, when I painted it two months ago. Now I, you know, found it in my files and I don't see what was so wrong with it, you know? So I think um, that's just a natural part, but um, I definitely fail and I definitely make a lot of mistakes. <laughs> and that's how you grow, right? And change as an artist is, is making all those mistakes. So, all right, let's put a little, uh, leaf kind of peeking out from behind. Having stuff coming out from behind is also going to help with the kind of three, <clears throat> excuse me, <clears throat> excuse me, <laughs> three dimensional look of this big round peony. As I paint the leaves, I'm also waiting for the, uh, the pink to dry so that I can layer because the peony, you know, what I think of when I think of a peony is just this big, like fluffy ball of petals. So I am trying to, um, so I'm trying to, uh, you know, capture that layers and layers and layers of petals. So I actually want to build up my watercolor in layers. Someone said you're not a fan of your finished product until you come back later. A hundred percent. Sometimes I film a video and I'm like, I'm not going to put that out. Um, and then the next day I'm like, that looks, that looks fine. <laughs> like, why didn't I want to share that? So uh, always let your art breathe. Don't throw it away. You know, you can always use the back of the paper for scrap or something like that. Okay. I think the pink has dried quite well. So I actually don't hate the way this peony looks, but I want to continue to build up some more color. We had a few questions about whether we're going to be doing giveaways again. Yeah. So I, I just wanted to say that, yeah, starting in September and October, we'll be running giveaways. Yes. So no worries. There's going to be lots more giveaways in the fall. Yes. We have all kinds of goodies, actually, that we are kind of stockpiling. We've been a little quiet around here. Um, we just had our first baby. His name is Sullivan. We call him Sully. He was born on May 18th and he's the sweetest little healthy baby boy. So we did take two weeks off from filming in June. Um, so that's why there was no July plan with me. Also, it felt a little, it would have felt not genuine to me to post a July plan with me because I haven't been using my planner a lot. You know, we're on maternity leave. We're spending a lot of time outdoors going for walks, naps, <laughs> that kind of thing. So that is what is going on, but we are back to filming and we will be posting an August plan with me as usual. Okay, so now I've got a darker pink. I want to just add some layers to, this, to these petals. So anywhere kind of around the base where the light might not hit quite as well. I feel like I need an even darker pink. I want a really dramatic, you know, I can just kind of make some messy lines at the top. There we go. Kind of have to be brave with these layers. It can look a little harsh when you first put it on, but then I think when you come back to it, it's like, oh yeah, that really 
captures the look of that layers and layers and layers of petals. You can always use a damp brush to soften anything. Soften that a little, bleed that, blend that out. All right. I also love doing big open peonies with the stamen in the center. You can sometimes just start. I'll try to do one really quick. Start with that messy stamen. Use a great color like a yellow ochre like I'm doing here and just do these messy lines. And then while that is still wet, you're going to surround it. I'm using a number eight round brush so I can do these big, loose, round petals round shapes, tucking some in behind here. If you run out of space, just do the hint of a petal like that. Bring that down a bit. So I'm making this kind of like cup shape around those initial stamens, around that yellow stamen in the center. Same thing, maybe a few petals falling away from the ball shape we're from the round center. Ooh, not too shabby. Let's grab some darker green for this one. I don't want to touch the pink yet because you can see it's still really wet. So if I put my green up against that left hand petal, it's going to be like major messy. But there we go. And then I obviously would want to layer a bit more with that one as well, but for the sake of time, let's keep moving. So what else do we say? Let's do a little milkweed on this page. I'm going to Google it really quickly. How long have I been painting with watercolors? Good question. I have been using watercolors since 2015. I um, didn't like them for the longest time because I just felt like they were so difficult. They weren't, um, they were, you know, if you make a mistake with watercolor, it's really difficult to cover it up. And uh, that really annoyed me because I was a perfectionist. But around 2015, I just opened myself back up to practicing art as an adult. That's when I started the channel, just to share my journey. And if you go back and watch those initial videos, you can see that I really was just starting out, truly just starting out. Um, and you can see my journey because I just had a very cheap dollar store watercolor set and I was just painting like the simplest of stuff and it was wonderful to get into it and get started and not put any pressure on myself. Um, so yeah. Okay, I like this milkweed. This is a crazy looking plant. I'm going to do it in kind of that mauve pink color. It's made up of all these tiny little blossoms. I am going to mix a little bit of purple into my pink here to get this beautiful mauve that is going to suit this milkweed. Grab a little bit of white. That's kind of a pretty color. I need a little bit of a darker bit of that as well. I like to mix a little brown into my pinks and purples usually to just to mute them slightly so that they're not like super pinky purple. Like I don't want like a Barbie pink. Okay. I mean, I've never painted this before, so let's see how it goes. This is interesting. Someone commented milkweed is the only plant monarch butterflies lay their eggs on. Wow. You know, that makes so much sense to me because I used to go out, um, we used to walk uh, a trail near our house, my dad and I, when I was a kid, and we would always see monarch butterflies, and there was a lot of milkweed on that trail. So... That's really interesting, and that was in Southern Ontario. So basically with any plant, I am just trying to simplify, simplify, simplify. So when I look at milkweed, it's if you look at a picture on Google Images, it kind of looks like it might be hard to paint. It's made up of all these tiny little blossoms. What I wanna do is capture these light little blossoms. You know, I'm grabbing from different colors of that pink. I'm going to cluster them all together. I'm just doing it really messy like. And that's how I'm going to, 
you know, kind of approach what is a rather, I think could be a rather complicated flower. <laughs> If you found this tricky, what you could do, because the cluster of flowers is kind of circular, you could actually draw a, a pencil circle and then fill it in with, with these tiny blossoms. And I'm just doing each little flower one petal at a time. They all kind of come to a point. And you can see I'm grabbing from different areas of the pinks that I've mixed up so that they're not all the same color. And that gives me a nice natural look. Okay, and as I approach the outside of my circle, I might just put like one or two petals. It doesn't need to be a full starburst of flower each time. There we go. Sorry, I'm sniffly. It's like very cool and rainy here today. We've had a nice sunny week and now we're getting a big thunderstorm today. Okay. And then because this is watercolor, I don't want this to be too stiff, so I'm going to wet my brush. Oops, okay, I had way too much paint there. But what I wanted to do actually kind of fits. I just want to start making these a bit messier. So instead of having like all these perfect flowers, I kind of want to abstract this flower a little bit. Well, I've abstracted it a lot, but that's okay. <laughs> Might even drop some water over here and muss these up a little bit. You know me, I like it perfectly imperfect. So, <laughs> so that's cool. I learned something new today, the butterfly flower. I love that. That feels very Canadian to me, actually, because milkweed grows in the northern hemisphere. So, but I'm sure many countries know this, this plant. So you can see how it goes from having some very defined little blossoms to um, having some very, very abstracted blossoms. And actually, whoa, I keep putting way too much paint on the page. That's okay. I'm just going to add a little more paint over here so that then I can come in with some green. Should have mixed up the green ahead of time, but I didn't, but that's okay. I'm getting some nice olive greens and olive browns. And I didn't leave myself a whole lot of room here, did I? But the milkweed has these big oval shaped leaves that have a very definite um, sort of vein down the center. So what I want to do is paint them basically in two brush strokes so that I can capture, you know, that it has basically just two sides. And sometimes one side could be very small. I should have done maybe a mintier color. I feel like the, the leaves are kind of a minty green, but you know what, that's okay. We can do a stalk. When I ever I do a, a stem, I just usually wiggle the brush so that it's never like perfectly straight. It's always a little bit messy and broken. There's my little milkweed just trying to inch its way onto this <laughs> sketchbook page. This was a good request, something totally different. There we go. I hope you found that helpful. You can always hint at leaves, you know, just by putting something like that. It really fills it in and makes it look like, oh, there's lots of leaves around this flower, you know, so you can get quite messy with the leaves as well. Okay, what else are we saying? What else do we say we would do a... Two people have asked about your sketchbook. Oh, sure. So my... It's linked in the description. It is linked. So maybe we'll just say that. It's from Strathmore and it's linked in the description. Don't forget, we always link all the supplies that we use for every video. They're just in the video description. It is a different paintbrush. We can link that later on. I just got these and I'm trying them out. Uh, okay, before I flip the page, I am just gonna add some more, you know, you can always continue to build and layer. Whoops. And so I can always just add a little more detail on the peony, something like that. And if you 
want to add more to your leaf, you can add some detail. That's never a bad idea. Just a little bit of extra color goes a long way. And you know what, even seeing the milkweed begin to dry, if I added a little more purple, I could probably do a lot by simply adding some little centers to some of these flowers. Ooh, almost messed that up. <laughs> And that just brings the cluster to life even just that much more. Makes it look makes it look quite pretty, I think. Okay. We did say we do a daisy. We can just do like a quick daisy. Yeah. A few people have asked for hydrangea. I actually have a hydrangea video. And I have um, a mini hydrangea coming up next Friday. So look for that next Friday. And we'll do a quick daisy. We could do daisy and just a little bit of eucalyptus. I think those would look really pretty together. I have some colors mixed up here. I'm switching to hot pressed paper from Arches. I sort of switch between hot pressed and cold pressed. I like both and you may have a preference. Cold pressed has more texture. Hot pressed is much smoother. The cold pressed version is linked in the description. Yeah, cold pressed Just is so linked. Get an, get an idea. Yeah. Just using the tip of my brush to kind of make a cluster of dots. You can always make an area lighter by kind of just using a damp brush and removing a little bit of paint, soaking up. You can kind of use your brush as an eraser. Let's start there. Then I've got a nice light gray. So anytime you're painting a white flower, you um, are kind of just painting the shadow and the outline. So we want the flower, we want the petal to look white. So we need to make sure to keep a number a, a quite a bit of this white page showing through so I'm kind of just painting like the outside of this petal and I wanted it to mix just slightly with the with the yellow in the center let's do another one Oh, this is not a really a daisy, is it? I kind of forgot and started doing this large fat flower. <laughs> That's okay, we can always do a daisy beside it. Weird daisy, Shada. <laughs> so there you can see I always kind of do one brush stroke quite large, and then I use the tip, that fine point tip, to go around and draw the rest of the petal so that the majority of each petal looks nice and light. Okay, let's try this with an actual daisy. How about that? <laughs> let's do... There's been a few questions about whether they're gonna be able to rewatch this video. Yes. And we should mention that this video, as soon as we're done, this, sh this video will be posted on the yeah. channel. So you can rewatch it anytime. Yeah. That way you can paint along. It's all in real time, of course. Um, so we're trying to respond to those requests that we get for more real-time content. So there I've got a little center. The nice thing about this, the center is you can just make a messy area and then as it dries, you can go back and add uh, some stippling and some more detail. That could even be, be drier actually. Okay, wipe my brush nice and clean. And for the daisy, I want to obviously do these long, thin petals, but it's basically the same drill. I like to start with a long brush stroke, add that nice, thick, shadowy area, and then go around. There we go. And add the detail. There could be some petals just sticking out there. Pressure and then draw in the petal 
using the tip of the brush. Add some pressure, draw in your petal. Pressure, draw in the rest of the petal. And we of course have little petals peeking out in behind here. Pressure. If you need to rotate the page, do so. I really like the way a little bit of purpley gray looks with that like brownish yellow and the way they blend. It's so beautiful. That's sort of the happy accidents that you're looking for with watercolor. The way you see the blending of, from the stamen to the petals. It's just so natural and pretty. And then as that dries, we can add a lot more detail. Um, but it's up to you how much detail you, you like to add. I tend to like a quite a loose floral, although on daisies I am kind of a sucker for adding more detail because it just helps them really jump off the page. And another thing with white flowers, uh, what we want to do is get some nice green. I'm going to get a bit of a lighter green. Mix it with the fallow green. And the nice thing here to help a white flower really jump off the page is we can add uh, petals. I mean, sorry, leaves, not petals. And any leaf that kind of goes in behind those petals is going to help that white petal just really jump off the page. So it'll help to, to create that contrast. So maybe I've got a petal, I'll just do the, sorry, a leaf. I'll just do the line of it there. And then I just kind of make this messy shape and it fills in really nicely in behind those, those white petals. There we go. And I like kind of how loose that is. Remember, just change the pressure on your brush as you're doing the stem so that you don't get a too straight of a line or too even. It's nice if there is some difference in the thickness of that line. There we go. Add a little more water to change the color of that green ever so slightly and we could Make some leafy type shapes in behind here. I just want to tell Gasha Gamer that it's not pre-recorded. No, this is live. <laughs> we are live. <laughs> Anything could happen. We actually have a sleeping baby in here right now. He could yeah, wake up. He asked, could freak out. That's where your baby is. Uh, I'm holding. I'm holding the baby in the background. Yes, Chris is He's holding asleep, him. He's thankfully. so cute. Yeah. <laughs> He looks so funny when he sleeps on Chris. He's so little. His little legs just hang. <laughs> when I announced this on Instagram last week, someone was like, that's brave. You have a newborn. I was like, oh, yeah, that's true. This could go horribly. <laughs> I'm just going to mix a little more blue into my gray to darken it ever so slightly. And then, like I was saying, you can continue to add detail to these florals. Just a few little lines can make all the difference. Uh, that's quite blue, but I don't hate it. And then um, same thing with the stamen, you know, continue to build up some color, some contrast, some texture. I could even go straight to brown, I think, and that kind of kind of works. Don't want to spend too much more time on these. Let's do a quick eucalyptus and then I got to go. Eucalyptus is like, I feel at the heart of what this channel is because I started with a lot of eucalyptus because it's just so simple and it's fun to paint. I'm gonna mix a blue, a navy blue into my green. 
I'm even going to mix a little white into the green to give me that really grayed out minty sort of color. Let's make this one more minty as well. I want to have a couple different areas of green to pull from. We might mix a little purple in. As I said, that gives us a really beautifully minty green. And eucalyptus I love to paint because that is another time when you really get to use the pointed round brush. You're going to use just the tip of that brush for the You're going to use just the tip of the brush for those stems and then your eucalyptus leaves, they're just these big, loose, messy shapes. So it's really fun to paint them and just get loose. Some are on an angle so you're just going to see like this tiny little line of a leaf. Some cross the stem directly, like so. Oops, okay. Let's make that into a leaf. Yes, happy accident. The best kind. There we go. I'm kind of trying to paint without putting my hand on the daisies. <laughs> With the eucalyptus, you've kind of got some smaller leaves at the top, getting larger as you go down. I like to just run the brush across the page and just kind of see what you get. I think the thinner the stem can look so good. I just saw a request for sunflowers. We're not gonna have time, but I do have an old sunflower video. So just search Shada Campbell sunflowers. And that's actually something I might revisit because that video is a bit older. So um, yes, I'm always looking for new, new requests. Whatever you guys wanna see, I love to hear it. Eucalyptus is a great way to get warmed up. You can get really messy and just kinda <laughs> see what you get. Blend your colors a little. Just have fun with it. Get a little crazy. You know, this looks a bit messy, but it's a great little exercise. And this would be fun if you just ripped that all up and had little, like it was could be a backdrop on, on the back of a card or something like that. Upside down eucalyptus. Okay. <laughs> okay. I think that's about it for me. Um, I did have so much fun painting and I thank you for your requests. I think um, 
think this went well and uh, I never know how live is gonna go <laughs> and some days you're on and some days you're not you know when it comes to your painting uh, do check the video description for any supplies if you're wondering if this is going to be posted it is so you can watch it back in real time I mean this went really well we have a sleeping baby it's dark and rainy I'm growing out my hair so there's a lot of things working against us but it, I think it was a lot of fun <laughs> and uh, we're hoping to do it more often Often because it does sort of answer the need for real-time content and it's just it's really fun and it's a great way to connect um, we are gonna run some giveaways it's always fun to do some live giveaways so definitely make sure you're subscribed to the channel so that you don't miss the giveaways you don't miss the live content and um, of course there's a new video every Friday so you don't want to miss any of those uh, thank you so much for coming and hanging out with me and uh, I guess is there anything else yeah, here, let's, uh, Chris is just asking if I want, we can introduce Sally to our, oh my gosh, he's so cute when he's asleep. That's his best time when he's sleeping. Oh, he hi. is. Hi. Oh my goodness. Look at this little chunky baby. Look at this friendly little guy. He's such a friendly guy. This is Sally. <laughs> he is just over seven weeks old. And he's just was having a wonderful nap. Strapped to dad. That's one of his favorite places to be. Yeah. So happy. Such a happy guy. Yes. The happiest guy in the land. <laughs> Sorry, I'll just talk gibberish for the next hour. We can actually keep going. <laughs> you can just listen to me talk to my baby. Yes, you're a chunky monkey. Oh, big stretch. Guys, thank you so much for hanging out. Please hit the subscribe button. Subscribing to the channel is something that you can do that really supports us. Those numbers, they really mean a lot to our business. Um, so if you are ever thinking, well, how could I say thank you to Shada for this content? It's simple, just subscribe. It doesn't cost you anything. <laughs> and uh, we really appreciate it. We're on the road it. to one million. Yes, we're on the road to a million. Help us out. Help us out. We love you for it. Uh oh, someone's going to get hungry. Okay, guys, I will see you next Friday with a new tutorial. Patrons of the channel, you get your bonus tutorial for July tomorrow on July 10th. So uh, look for that on Patreon. And if you're not a patron, consider joining. Um, that link is also in the video description. Okay, bye, guys. Bye.